Ruth chapter 4. Then went Boaz up to the gate. This is where this this is where uh, your civil uh, your your city hall, your town hall. This is where business would be done. This is where your legal pres presentation, this is where your courthouses were done in the city gates. Everybody had to pass through the city gates. You didn't climb into a, a city by over the wall or anything like that. So business, commerce, legal would go through the gates. Lot was a judge in the city gates of Sodom and sat him down there. Hebrews 1.3. Now looking at Boaz, a type of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1.3. Who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and up, upholding all things by the word of his power when he had himself purged our sins sat down the right hand of the majesty on high chapter 10 verse 12 Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father today he's not going to offer any more sacrifices one sacrifice verse 12 10 yeah 10 12 but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down in the right hand of the right hand of God that's perfection Boaz comes in he's got a job to do he sits down in the gates and behold the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by now this is the man that he told Ruth there's one nearer than, than me. Here he is. He shows up. He's a man that would be frequent to the city that Boaz knows he would show up. This man is never given a name in Ruth. And unto him he said, Ho, oh, such a one. Turn aside. Sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. There's business. Now here's a city gate. This is Bethlehem. This is where Naomi returned. This is where Boaz is situated, Bethlehem. Now I'm going to wonder, here's a gate. And I'm going to assume, I don't do that often, but 2 Samuel 23. And this you, can, you don't have to believe. But something to think about. 2 Samuel 23, 15. Bethlehem is the birthplace of David himself, and later to be Jesus' birthplace. But watch this. I, I just wonder. Here, here's my wondering. And David longed and said, Oh, that would one give the drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate. Now, I wonder if that's the same gate that's going on right now with David's great, 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 great grandparents. <laughs> Wouldn't that be interesting? Now, there, there are probably many gates in Bethlehem. Now, you just wonder. This is the place. I'm not saying it is. Just something to think about. Scripture with Scripture. So, Boaz is sitting there in the gate. And this other near kinsman comes walking by and says, Yo, -ho, come here. Sit down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city, respectable men, elders, and says, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. Telling everybody to sit. And he said unto the kinsman, No name mentioned. Now he's going to tell the story to the kinsman. And it's going to be the right story. It's going to be the history. History keeps in the Bible. Naomi, that has come again out of the country of Moab, sells a parcel of land. Now that's where we get called a parcel of land. comes out of the Bible. She sells it. Which was our brother, Elimelech. Jewish. It's Jewish people. Eliminic was Jewish, Naomi was Jewish, Boaz is Jewish, Eliminic was Jewish, 
this near kinsman is Jewish. We're all under the law. And I thought to advertise thee. Well, look at that. Well, how's that word for advertise? Now, it's not the first time that word shows up. I believe it shows up in numbers. And there's no, I'm trying to fraud you. I'm showing you something. And it happens to do with a parcel of land. Saying, buy it. <laughs> Look, buy it in advertising. Before the inhabitants, that's the people we're witnessing right there. And before the elders, those are the people, 10 men that he chose. So there are other people who are watching this. There are 10 elders called as a witness while other people are stopping. They're looking at what's going on over there. Kind of like the jury in the courtroom. It'll be a jury. Yep. So this is not done in the private. Of my people. Now what he means, my people, he means the people of Bethlehem. Implying that this near kinsman is not of Bethlehem. But he frequents Bethlehem. My people, they're all Jews, but these are people of my city. This is my city. If thou will redeem it, buy it back. Redeem it. Plain and simple. Man, he gets right to the point. There's land, there's Naomi. It's our brother's land. If you can redeem it, redeem it. But if thou will not redeem it, then tell me. That I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I am after thee. So here's this deal. You're the next one in life. So already we are looking at the law of the kinsman. It's taken for granted. You're the nearest kinsman. If you're going to take care of it, all right, take care of it. If you don't, I'm next. And he said, I will redeem it. Okay, this is plain and simple right there. I will redeem it. He's holding true, but he hasn't been given all the information. And Boaz is not going to leave him hanging. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field, redeem the field, buy it back, of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabites. So here's Naomi, the wife of Elimelech, but there's also another woman involved. There's another wife involved, Ruth, and she's a Moabite. She's not a, not a Jew. The wife of the dead, she's a widow too, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And there's the law proscribed and told by Boaz. Now, we're not only looking at Naomi here, but now we're looking at Ruth. We are looking at the son of Naomi, whose wife is a Moabitess. And you got to buy it from her. To raise up the name of the dead. And we'll look at the name in a moment. To raise up a child. Ruth was childless. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it from myself. He could redeem it just as with Naomi. Verse 4. I will redeem it. But when you add Ruth to Moabites, the kinsman says, I can't. I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. So if I were to take Ruth to Moabites that you have now put on the table, I'm in trouble. I can't do it. It's going to make me vile. And it's not ever, It's not said it's an excuse. That is what he tells Boaz. Least I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself. It's mine. Legally, it's mine. But I can't do it. He didn't say he didn't want to do it. He says he cannot do it. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Boaz. For I cannot redeem it. So something about Ruth and the Moabites and this guy, he cannot do it. But he might already have a wife and children. That's what, that's what it could be too. And when we've been with Naomi, her children have already been married. 
So it would have been just the land. But now you got a widow woman who's capable of being married again. And you raise a child on that land. So, and if that's the case, he's not going to go to multiple wives, as you will see, First Samuel's and all that. And we're not told the skills to do that. I cannot do it. But I will turn it over to you. So Boaz gets legal permission with elders present. I cannot do it. I cannot redeem it for at least I mar my own inheritance. Redeem my right. So, that's, so what is my right? I pass on to you. For I cannot redeem. Now this was the manner of former time. The law. In Israel, concerning redeeming and concerning changing. That's the first and last time that shows up. For to confirm, first time that word shows up. All things a man plucked off his shoe. Well, let's go to Deuteronomy 25.10. And let's look at Deuteronomy 25.10. Let's look at the law and what the law prescribed. Because it has been changed. And we'll start 25, verse 5. The law. And if brethren dwell together, and one of them die and have no child, Ruth, the wife of the dead, Ruth, shall not marry without unto a stranger. <laughs> That's funny because she's a stranger, isn't she? Her husband's brother shall go in unto her. Now, his brother's dead. So now we got to go to kinsmen. And we're not told what that relationship is. But he does say we are the brother to Eliminek. And uncles or somebody like that. I don't know family relations. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her. And take her to him to wife. That would be the nearest kinsman that has no name in Ruth War. He's the most nearest to me. And he can't do it. Next on the line is Boaz. And that near kinsman has now provided to Boaz to do what we're going to read. And perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. So that's, this is what Boaz is going to do. This is what the man has said he cannot do. And it shall be that the firstborn, which shall bear, which she shall bear, shall succeed the name of his brother which is dead. This child is going to be Obed. That his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, Ruth 4, 7, I cannot. I can handle Naomi, but I can't handle Ruth. I mean, as far as the inheritance, not the women. Then let his brother's wife go up to the gate Unto the elders. Well, who's at the gate? The important people. Who's at the gate at Ruth chapter 4? There's the elders. There's Boaz. There's the nearest kinsman. Where's Ruth? Waiting with Naomi. Yeah, but she's supposed to be there according to the law. If he can't do it, then let the brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, my husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. And he will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Now there's no exception for excuse there. Oh, I cannot. Well, then Ruth is supposed to go turn to the elder and say, he won't do it. And then the elders of the city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her. Well, that's pretty much what he says over here. I cannot do it. Ruth is missing. You see how far the law has gotten off? We'll go back to Ruth in a moment. And then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face. And shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto the man that will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel, The house of him that has his shoe loose. 
All right, back to Ruth. Now back to Ruth chapter 4, verse 2. And he took ten men of the elders of the city. There's the law. That's what we read. Deuteronomy 25. There's elders. And said, sit down here. They sat down. He said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, sells a partial of land, which was our brother, Eliminat. That's Deuteronomy 25. The brother's dead. There's a woman. Naomi has had children. So now it's the land. What is it now? All right, she's had children. The land is to be called Eliminate's land that no one else can have it but that of the family. Well, it would have been passed on to Noah. If he's, but he's dead. I know, but it would have been. So when Joshua, in Joshua's time, gives out the land and gives out the land by lot, this lot is not to be lost because family dies out. It's to be ever in the tribe, in the family, in the limit. And I thought to advertise these saying, buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people, Deuteronomy 25. If thou will redeem it, redeem it. But if thou will not redeem it, then tell me, Deuteronomy 25, that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Now, remember what we read in Deuteronomy 25. If the brother will do it, let him do it. And if he says, I can redeem it, Boaz can't do nothing now. Right now, he cannot do nothing. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou, thou must buy it, the land, the land, the promise given to the Jews. It also of Ruth the Moabites. Now here comes Deuteronomy 25. Here comes the wife. Now she's not there. The wife of the dead. Deuteronomy 25. To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Deuteron Boaz knows the law. Deuteronomy 25. Look at that. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself. At least I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. At this point, not, uh, Ruth is supposed to step up to him and say, he won't do it. But he's got, no, he said he will not do it, Deuteronomy 25. Now watch how we violate Deuteronomy 25, the law. Now this was the manner of former time. In Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For to, to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe. Deuteronomy 25 says that woman, that, that widow, is to walk up to that man and untie his shoes. That's humility. And give it to his neighbor. Uh, what about spitting in the face? Deuteronomy 25. It was to be a shame. That that man would not take his brother's wife. And this was the testimony in Israel. But we read in Deuteronomy 25 what the law said. Therefore, the kinsman said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. That's not Deuteronomy 25. Boaz said unto the elders, Elder, excuse me, say, And unto all the people. So there's more than ten people here. Ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was in Limonex and all that was Chilion's and Millen's, both children in Limonex, of the hand of Naomi. Now there's her land, there's her husband, there's her boys. Now the widow of the boys, more Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Milion. Now we know. Four chapters to find out whose husband she was. Have purchased to be my wife. To raise up the name of the child, uh, excuse me, of the dead, upon his inheritance. That the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. And from the gate of his place, ye are witnesses this day. Alright, so he said, no, he's not going to do it. He cannot do it. He has given me the right. 
and I'm buying the right. And there's no money exchange. What is that Boaz is, what is the purchase item that he's using to purchase it if it's not money? He's using Deuteronomy 25. I'm going to purchase that woman by the law. And that's pleasing to God because that's what the law said to do. After he is given that right, which he did not have the right. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders. So more than 10 people. We are witnesses. So there it is. Everybody see what happened? And I would assume maybe they would have to sign their names or their seals. You know, they carried rings with seals. We have witnessed what happened today between Boaz and his near kinsman over Naomi's property and the wife, Ruth. The Lord make the woman that is come into thy house. Now see that? He's going to take her into his house. Like Rachel and like Leah. Those are the two women that built the children of Israel. Fruitful. Which two did build the house of Israel. And do thou worthy in Ephata, that's the city, which means fruitful. Ephata means fruitful. Bethlehem means house of bread. Ephata, that's the city, fruitful. And you know what that, fruitful, that fruitfulness brings? It brings forth two great kings, if not three. King David, King Solomon, and King Jesus Christ. And be famous in Bethlehem. So, the eighth book of your Bible, four little chapters, we read about a man named Boaz, and if you're to study your Bible, and you're to read your Bible throughout the year, and your church is faithful by preaching to your children Bible stories out of the Bible, Boaz should be famous in your house, in your church. Is he in your church? Do they? If we were to stop every other person exiting the church, no matter what age they were, and say, tell me, Boaz, what kind of answer would you get? And yet the Bible says, be famous in Bethlehem. You should be famous in the, in, in the Bible, because there he is. Solomon even named one of the pillars. Well, the, yeah, just gonna, yeah, he named well, the pillars Boaz. One of them. One of them. David. You could not mention a David without having the story of Ruth and Boaz. I guarantee that may have been a story that David heard by his grandparents, by his own parents. It's in the Bible. And let thy house be like the house of Perez. That's Judah. Whom Perez bare the Judah. That's the one, the child that, you know, inside the mother's womb, they fought, they struggled, stuck his hand out, pulled his hand back out, and and Perez came out. Born of a harlot. Judah goes out, he's going to share his seat. Ooh, there's a woman there. How much, how much, money, how much money do you want? I'm going to be clean now. But of Judah, that is the line of Jesus Christ. You will find in Luke, and you'll find in Matthew 1. Bear unto Judah the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. That blessing of Judah, that blessing of Rachel, a Jewish nation of people of Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah, that's, that's prophesying Jesus Christ. And yet the Bible says he came on his own, his own did not receive them not. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. If something went wrong with her husband, Billy and I went, I guarantee they came together, and yet she was like barren. Ten years. Hmm? So they Over were ten years. Like ten years. Over ten years. No, they were married ten years. So, she bare a son. And the woman said, the women said, now watch this, unto Naomi. Blessed be the Lord. That was Asher. Uh, I'm, just, I'm trying to think. Leah. 
So now they shall call me blessed, call me happy. And she named his name Asher. Blessed be the Lord. Amazing how that comes back up. Which has not left thee this day without a kinsman. That his name may be famous in Israel. Now watch, there's two famous. Famous in Bethlehem and famous in Israel. So verse 11, Lord, make the woman that is come unto thy house like Rachel and like Leah, which too did build the house of Israel, and do thou worthy in Ephra, and be famous. Who's the famous in Bethlehem? Ruth. You're talking about mothers. Ruth. So we come down here. Verse 14, the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which has not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. Boaz, he's the kinsman. So both Boaz and Ruth are famous, or should be. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of life, far as the womb. Almost like a... Uh, Abraham and, and Sarah, they had no child all the way up to the 99. And a nourisher of thy old age, like Abraham and Sarah. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee. Look, look, there's an, look, we're still learning the characteristics of Ruth. We're coming to the end of Ruth. She really loves you, Naomi. Which is better to thee than seven sons has borne him. That love that Ruth had for you, that's better than seven sons you can have. Man, she brought food home to her. She comforted her. She stayed with her. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom, and it became nurse unto it. That would be like the book of Acts. Here a child is born of, of, of Ruth. That would be the child that would be born would be the church age. And it needs to be nourished in the book of Acts. It needs to be taken care of. It need, it's growing very slowly. I got Romans 11.25. Let's see what that says. Romans 11.25. Romans 11.25. It says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, unto the fullness of the Gentiles is come. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it's written. They shall come out of the Sion, deliver, and shall turn away the ungodliness of Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sin. Listen, it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. And the woman, the women, her neighbors, gave it a name. Isn't that funny? Today, as parents, sometimes for some children, you know, we think out names. We pre-name the child before it's born. Here, the women of the, of the country, the women of this, the neighborhood, they come up and they give this child that belongs to New Ruth and uh, Boaz. They gave it a name. And they called his name Obed. Obed means worshiper he is the father of jesse the father of david which means beloved that's the first time david shows up in the bible right there in ruth now these are the generations let's run back of pharaohs there he is that was in verse 12 pharaohs beget hezron hezron beget ram and Ram begat Aminadab. And Aminadab begat Nashon. Nashon begat Solomon. Solomon begat Boaz. And Boaz begat Obed. And Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat David. Ten generations. Matthew 1. Matthew chapter 1. Let's see how famous. Verse 2, Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob begat Judas and his brethren, 
and Judas begat Pharez, and Zara of Tamar, and Pharez begat Eshron, Eshron begat Amram, and Amram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nasha. Now, it's just different stone because of different language. Nashon begat Solomon. Solomon begat Boaz. Oh, look at that. We know Solomon. We know Boaz's father. Of Rechab. And Boaz begat Obed. Of Ruth. Look, oh, look, Ruth is there. Obed begat Jesse. Jesse begat David the king. And David the, the king begat Solomon. Of her that had been the wife of Urias. Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Is he, is he to be famous? In the Old New Testament, Old Old Testament. And 3.31. Luke 3.31. At the end of the verse. Which is the son of Nathan. Which is the son of David. Which is the son of Jesse. Which is the son of Obed, which is the son of Booz or Boaz, which is the son of Solomon, which is the son of Nesson, which is the son of Minadad, which is the son of Amram, which is the son of Esau, which is the son of Pharaoh, which is the son of Judah, which is the son of Jacob, which is the son of Isaac, which is the son of Abraham. There it is. You can't miss it. So if you're going to base your salvation on the gospel of Jesus Christ, that not only is Jesus Christ virgin born, you better have a Jewish Jesus Christ. He came unto his own, the Bible said. What's that own? It runs all the way back to Abraham, if not further, to Adam, but Abraham. And of that line, of what of Abraham? Ishmael? Did David come from Ishmael? Absolutely not. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and run it to, if ever have the king David. Because that King David will produce a grandson. King Jesus will, will take the throne of David. You got to be careful because Paul tells us there's other Jesus out there. My Jesus runs in the line of David going all the way back to Abraham. I can find it in Ruth, Matthew, Luke, uh, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. It distincts Jesus among all other Jesus. It distincts the kingly line of Jesus Christ. It distincts the Jewish line of Jesus. Because I've seen pictures of Jesus white. I've even seen pictures in churches where Jesus is black and the disciples. That Jesus cannot save you. Absolutely not. 